Hello, this is Katie. Welcome back to my channel. This is a video every day in October, day 27. And we're going to be using a globe from Ready Set Snow from Lawn Fawn to create a cauldron upside down. And I will link the person who came up with the idea, uh, her Instagram down below, Handmade Cards by Jasmine. I'm using the MFT hybrid ink because it is waterproof um, when it dries. And so I'm going to be watercoloring and I'm very excited. So I have this Holbein set of quarter pans that I got from Etsy. And I'm gonna be using the Payne's Gray for the cauldron and then we'll be using the leafy green, a little bit of Verdian green. And then I had pointed to the orange, but I decided not to use the orange on the card. So I have a piece of watercolor paper, four and a quarter by five and a half, just the Michaels 140 pound um, paper pads I always show in my hauls because I always grab one. And then I'm going to uh, ink this up twice and use my pressure pal to get the even pressure and even image. I'll link the pressure pal down below as well. And uh, so just two, two stamp layers, ink layers on that one. And then what I need to do is kind of match with one of my pens the thickness of this line. So I'm going to look at what they each look like. And I'm going to go with the 8, size 8 pen, the Micron pen. I use these for sketching as well for watercolor. So I know that I can watercolor over the pen. Uh, here I am trying to kind of imagine what a foot of a cauldron would be and this is what I ended up with. I didn't want to do like claw feet. Also the one on the right is not as long as the one on the left but that's fine. Uh, I didn't want to do like a claw foot thing because I it just would have looked like feet and then this would have looked like the Kool-Aid man. So there's that. So I am using the snowflakes, the round snow from the same set, the Ready Set Snow. And there's one stamp of three and then one single stamp of the, the single uh, circle. So I'm just kind of moving them around. But then I did realize that I wanted to put a sentiment in the middle of it because there's no more room for a bigger sentiment at the bottom but we'll get to the bottom later. And I really, really like this Frightfully Fun Halloween set. I think it's an older set, but I got it on a D stash on Etsy. And I really like the Happy Halloween and this font. I love the font of all the sentiments, but uh, this one in particular. And then I just kind of twisted and turned this um, stamp of these couple stamps that I had set up to make it look a little bit different. And here I'm just going to stamp three of them. So I'm stamping it off the edge so I don't stamp onto my little cutting board here. Uh, I'm just using this to watercolor on in case I go over the edge. I'll be using my size six Wonder Forest paintbrush. I really, really like um, these paintbrushes a lot. And I figured this was a good size for what I'm doing. So I'll just use the same size the whole time. I am pre-wetting it because I want to get a wet on wet look as opposed to just painting, painting on to dry paper, which is kind of more like coloring with a marker, if that makes sense. So uh, I'm using the Payne's Gray from the set. And uh, I'm just redoing the edge, either the ink is kind of repelling it a little bit or it's the water that I put down and I must have you know not put it all the way to the edge of the ink it could be the ink though but that's fine it turns out fine and I think this color worked out really well and it makes it look very cauldrony so that's good and then I am pre-wetting the foot area I will eventually take some uh, water and paint out of my brush and soak up some of this and then relay down the color. And I did go out of the lines a little bit on this foot, so it kind of looks a little messy, but that's okay. Gonna pick up some of that water and then get more ink in there so it's a little bit darker. 
And then before I do the top of the cauldron, I'm going to use the leafy green and do our kind of light green potion. I want to say it's like chartreuse, but whenever I use a fancy color name, I also get it wrong. Like I called magenta cyan when cyan is a blue in one of my videos. I felt so dumb after that. And I'm pretty sure chartreuse is this kind of green ish. So I'm hoping that's accurate. So I kind of pre wet a bubbly looking area for the paint to flow into around our sentiment and our potion bubbles. And then I will go along the rim very carefully of the cauldron as well. And then I want to give that time to dry. So when you're painting, when you're watercoloring, you want to, uh, if you have to paint things that are next to each other that are different colors, you want to wait for one of them to dry. So you can basically just move on and paint another portion of what you're painting, especially if you have a sketch or line drawing beforehand. Uh, so here I pre-wet the thicker band on the water or on the cauldron and I'm going to fill that in while the green touching the thinner band on top is drying because I don't want the green I don't want the Payne's gray my dark gray here to bleed into my green potion I want them to stay separate so I'll give that a little bit of time to dry and then very carefully go into the thin band. I could tell visually it was dry enough at that point. And then I'm going to use my um, heat gun to dry the whole thing. And this is actually warping uh, the paper a lot. It's also very thick paper, but that's okay. You can kind of counteract it. Uh, as I do with normal cardstock when I'm doing heat embossing and things like that and it warps the paper, you can just flip it over, heat it up some more, and then kind of re-flatten it, if that makes sense. Uh, I've done it in videos before as well. And then I threw into my leafy green color some of the Viridian Hue just to make it a little bit darker green. And then I'm just filling in the bubbles with that color to help them stand out. Um, I think what I would do, and I probably will still, um, once the card, I mean, the card was dry, but, uh, later on the card, I think I want to add glossy accents onto the bubbles because, um, they've dried and flattened and, um, I think it would make it look extra, extra spooky and shiny because that'll just dry clear. So it'll look like shiny green bubbles. And then I am drying all of those. And then it has warped my paper again. So I am going to, um, I think I don't, yeah, I flip it over and dry it to kind of reflatten it again. And then I am going to use a wonky stitched rectangle die that I've been using a lot lately and cut it out. Now, while I wish that I had probably just done the cauldron lower, I am going to use the Boo Crew set that we used yesterday and take a sentiment from there to kind of fill in the bottom. And I think it works out really well. Um, my other option was I was going to end up using the orange. And my bottom here is pretty warped. So I'm actually going to put the magnet closer and that actually held it flat. So um, I just need to not be afraid of having my magnet so close to my stamp in my platform. Um, I was going to use the orange and kind of do like an orangey floor fog around the cauldron, but then I didn't want the orange to clash with the green poorly. So I decided to just add a sentiment to the bottom and no more color. And I think this worked out okay. So now to help our poor warpy paper, because it's not terribly warped. I had to clean up some paint there with my finger and some water. Um, it's not terribly warped, but I do want it to stick down really well. So I am overly adhesiving this card base 
more than I probably need to. And then I realize that this die cut is smaller than four and a quarter by five and a half. And I have put adhesive on the entire card base. So now I'm using my finger to roll the adhesive in from the edges so that it doesn't peek out from behind this panel because that wouldn't look very good. So then I stick it down and that is the card. I'm considering the glossy accents and then that's it. And thank you for watching and I will see you guys tomorrow for another video. Bye.